Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Education's uh, work session for March the 9th. Can we stand for the pledge? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. Um, our first item will be budget discussion. Yes. Uh, I think everybody's got their superintendent's proposed budget in front of them, and we've been doing this for a few months. Yes, with President Smith, members of the board, um, this evening we're going to be talking about budget. Um, you do have the presentation in front of you, and I'd just like to start with the actual PowerPoint. Um, and the first slide shows that, um, uniquely so, we'll be blending several resources together in order to propose a full budget. Um, you see uh, about 60% coming from local about 38% coming from state. Obviously, that's not quite 100%. We do bring in some, we do bring in small <coughs> revenues as it relates to um, those that use our facilities, those that uh, pay out of state tuition, and those types of things. So you can see that's a very small sliver um, of the overall budget. And then this year, uniquely so, um, we continue with those ESSER funds, um, specifically looking at targeting um, fifth through eighth grade as it relates to Chromebooks and then putting in um, five additional English language teachers. Uh, those, uh, that priority came through the process, so I kind of do want to refresh um, the process that we took because it was a lengthy process this year, um, but took an opportunity to have everybody sit at the table together, what are the priorities through the district. And, um, and EL teachers was a huge priority. Um, and so that was one of the number one things that we needed to address. So looking at those ESSER funds. Now I will um, bring your attention to the expiration date of those um, ESSER three funds, which you can see that is uh, September 30th of 24. We also right now are in the process of applying for uh, what's called the Maryland Leeds Grant. That grant is, uh, believe it or not, ESSER monies that were filtered to the state level that we have an opportunity uh, to apply for. There's eight different sections and we are applying for all eight and this would bring a significant amount of money um, to the district. And again, looking at what were those priorities that we heard throughout the budget process, which were additional guidance counselors and social workers. And and again, you can see that that goes up through June 30th of 24. So that is concerning to be very honest with you because that creates what we would call a potential cliff. So you have funding for two years and then that funding goes away. So right now, um, I wish I had the answer, but I don't, but I can tell you that the blueprint monies are not finalized yet. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts there that we are monitoring literally on a daily basis. I think the legislation will have some impact on those total numbers. And then the other kind of part of the puzzle is really the enrollment piece of it. So we're down about 350 students. Um, that's roughly around $14 million. Um, as of the September 30th count for 23, and then the September 30th count for 24 will have a huge impact on us. If we don't recover, that could potentially make that cliff real to us. If we recover that enrollment, then it's gonna put us in a much better standing. So. That's kind of all the blended resources together. I'm gonna to take a deep breath to see if anybody has any questions from this initial slide. I do for the LEADS grant, so do we have any idea what type of money we'd be talking about it? Let's say if we got money from all eight sections. Probably upwards of over $8 million. And when would we know that? Uh, April 22nd. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, and so then, I assume that there's a time limit, so like you were saying, we're hitting these cliffs June and September and this kind of money is off. Would those grants be able to be extended? If we got that, I assume that they could be used in that. 
No, okay. the, so we're planning for those two years what they look like. Now, there's certain parts of the blueprint um, that we have been notified on um, smaller sections within, you know, as I said, as, as you know, there's lots of moving parts there um, that we've been notified, like this funding source will be available for the next 13 years, this funding source. So we have some of those pieces to the pie, um, but some of the bigger ones, we don't have that information. And, and as I said, the legislation is actually gonna, I think, um, be a true tell tale of, of what our ending numbers are gonna be. Um, there's several bills that are in there that uh, will de definitely influence us um, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And we don't know how they're gonna fall out. We're just following them every single day. Um, so yeah, I, more information to come certainly over the next four weeks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other board members? So as we move through, uh, I really wanted to take um, special attention to what are the, the district needs as it relates to personnel. Um, <clears throat> and altogether, um, look at the whole compensation enhancement. Um, I, I have to say personally that the board has been more than supportive and, and these numbers tell that tale. Um, so we have the salary increases with FICA and retirement costs at $3.15 million. Um, that is a placeholder at this time. But we also have to look at our health care, which was an increase of really 12%. Mm. And um, we have a recommendation to use $1.7 million of the reserves. So that takes it from off the plate of our employees and shows the commitment that the board has made. So that 5% um, would be $550,000. And again, the 1.7 has to be included in that too. So if you add up those figures of 3.1 million plus the 550,000, that's the 5% plus the 1.7 that we're making the commitment to, that's $5.4 million that the board is focused on a placeholder for the overall compensation enhancement for employees. And I think that's significant because if you look at our overall budget, I think that's very significant. Can I ask a question? How mm -hmm. much is in the reserve right now? In the, in the ESMAC Healthcare Trust Reserve? As over. far as our portion? Are we allowed to know that number? It is not broken out. It is the county and board blended together. We can request that and hopefully that um, they can provide it to us soon. Because I don't uh, want to take the bigger piece of the pie that's not ours. Right, it's been blended for several years and it's a little over $12 million. With the and this was the and recommendation schools. from the partners who that's what they, that's their role for us is that they look at this and they make a, a recommendation based on the numbers that are there. So that's in their, their wheelhouse, that's their expertise. Um, and they wouldn't allow us to take the entire amount? It, no, okay. exactly. They're, they're gonna recommend something hey, that don't keeps ask, us, don't get. So yeah, they're, right they're gonna that's recommend right. something that keeps yeah. us stable yeah, it's and that's a, it's a good question. Um, but, but if we take the 1.7, which I think is prudent it's a reoccurring cost and that's a are we always going to have to it, fund it from there well that's what i mean if we do then we have a long-term problem um i think we've talked about it before that this might be a year anomaly because you know we've been through covert people have been in now they're going out more going to doctors more so mm -hmm. and doctors are opening up more to see patients so we were, we're i think we're also hoping that this year will be a physically challenging year but in the future we might see a little bit of a you know downward I, we hope I, a downward trend i agree with that completely um and we we are in a, a better place than some of those that are in the esmec mm -hmm. um consortium together i mean some of our our neighbors are at 12 percent with no help that's 12 percent going directly to um the employees so uh, you know I, I feel like there's that commitment there i also want to um just kind of bring out the part that this also really focuses on um, that livable wage for all of our employees and making sure that we are above the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And to do that, that's also calculated in that one column of salary increases, FICA and retirement costs. Um, <clears throat> so this is the largest placeholder. I asked Jane to go back and look several years back and as far as she could find, this is the largest placeholder and commitment from the board to date that we could see. So I think that's significant and should be noted. Any other questions from that? And you can see the additional um, supports. And again, you see that five EL teachers, the two counselors there, and then a maintenance position. Um, basically in food service, a, a, a lot of our tickets come from 
the food service area, whether it be a refrigeration issue or whatever. So looking at, at um, their funds to support that maintenance position. And then the two PE and health teachers are um, those unfunded mandates that we have spoken about prior, prior to where we're increasing those credits from a half credit to a full credit. And so- um, and that's state mandated. Those that's credits. state mandated, the credit count. And we just don't have the unfunded. staff. Unfunded. unfunded. Yeah, right. Unfunded. We don't have the staff that, to add another half a uh, semester. No, we don't students. have the staff to do that. And we also uh, cripple any of the upper level classes for, so, so even if we could squeak by, um, we would only be able to teach just PE and health. Like we wouldn't be able to do strength and conditioning and all the other uh, elective opportunities for our students. So um, it wouldn't really be equitable across the board. Okay. So continuing on with um, the district needs, but focusing more on the supports just for classrooms. Uh, we've had uh, taken a lot of time and energy, thanks to Jane and her team, um, to look at the copier situation. And um, we, had, we have copiers throughout the entire district that uh, um, have long been paid for, that don't have maintenance contracts with them, that are breaking down, not functioning. And uh, so we, we, we evaluated the entire district and, um, and reached out to some of our neighbors to determine that really the leasing option is a better option to go with. Not only is it better for your maintenance, it's better for long-term care, longevity, but overall it's good for your costs because as these machines get older, e each click costs more and more. So, um, so you don't want to keep a machine for 10 years and, and limp it along. You, you want to be able to lease it so that um, every few years are refreshing those machines. And, and so that's a cost that's a big support for our schools is copiers. The um, increase in tutoring funds, obviously with COVID, we have gaps for our students, and so we will continue to, um, to put the funds there to address those gaps. And then um, materials, curriculum writing, training, those types of things there. Um, this was really one of, that was really part of the realignment that we've been talking about um, through this whole budget process, and as well as the textbook allocation. Those things were located in a capital budget, which should really be um, in, our, in our operating budget and so those things were were added as well um, textbook textbooks and things. And I, like think, that. I think we we talked to the commissioners last year that we're going to have to re redo that and this is one of the things we have to put back in our uh, operating budget, operating budget yeah, with exactly. a couple other things so, like and this includes our computers and <clears throat> those things mm -hmm. Not the textbooks. Okay. The textbook is just pure Text. textbook allocation. So I, I have to bring up conferences. Mm -hmm. um, you know, during COVID, we cut all the conferences out of the budget for 2021, 20, 22, um, because nobody was going to go anywhere because we we're still in COVID. Um, I still have a hard time putting money in conferences when I know there's so many needs in the classroom. So, I, you know, you. That's just a concern of mine to put mm -hmm. that much money well, in conferences. It's this whole thing of $345,000 includes materials of instruction, curriculum writing, which mo a lot of it's curriculum writing, so that's actually salary-based. Right. Um, some training, some licensing memberships. The, the, the conferences is not uh, a huge, it's, it's not a huge piece of this. I was just looking at the um, numbers. But, but honestly, we do have to have some sort of conferences because, um, that's we really PD. need to keep up with, yeah, with the professional development piece of it. And we're going to get to the summary and we'll, yes. we'll review that of what, how much it is when we get to the kind of the more weeds of that summary. Okay. Um, and, and really, I also wanted to say that all of those areas there, um, or most of those areas there, that the supervisor was had to wait until the end of the year. And then it was like, if you had year end monies, then you did that. And that's that's not a good practice only because you really want to address the needs as they come along for the year. You don't want to just say, put them off, put them off, and then wait to the end of a school year and say, okay, so what are your needs now? And if we have the money, we can pay for it. We really need to be upfront and say, what are the needs? Let's get the funding source to meet those needs instead of kind of doing it backwards. So it's really that back to that realignment almost. And then the, the uh, other supports for the district as we move forward, um, 
the painting inspections and insurance again that was something that was typically done in that capital that we've done that realignment um, lease to own for the buses these are this is really uh, cost of doing business you have 15 year old buses that need to be replaced and these are our buses like for uh, special ed and things of that nature not it's contract uh, LLC so. no, these are our buses um, the maintenance vehicles again the cost of doing business you at some point you have to and we're moving that into a leasing so that we don't have a, a um, on your head. Right, or yeah, or a maintenance vehicle that we keep and that we're you know limping along and putting all this money into it. Um, this this is a safer option and a more um, efficient option. And then um, of course your placeholder for transportation contract services again cost of doing business and the two bus drivers we actually have had to add them this year as kind of substitutes and then we would be putting them in as permanent. Um, we have some students that were on routes for entirely too long and um, we we had to we just didn't really have a choice we had a couple special ed situations that um, it, 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 you know we need to look at what's best for the student and being on a bus for more than an hour is not in the best interest of students so we've addressed that through um, two additional drivers this year which we need to really continue those services for next year so any questions on that I have just a quick question on the insurance for the allocation for the contracted maintenance what would that insurance what is that for and what would that, does that look like it, for um, the painting inspection and insurance of in, insurance your first of, line of your um, buses of your vehicles. Okay, so that's so not that has to do with the contracted maintenance. Just it's maintenance as far as vehicles okay. and things like that okay. in the maintenance category. Thanks, thank you, Mrs. Towers. So if we go to the budget summary. Um, you'll see the state revenue and what I, I want to draw your immediate attention to is it says with blueprint for Maryland's future and so immediately I kind of want to flip to line 79 if you'll um, follow along with me and you'll see 79 80 81 and 82 these are all um, again unfunded mandates so the first one is the, the national board certification the price tag of two hundred and sixty thousand dollars and then you see those new PE teachers and then you see some special ed positions that were um, previously in those blueprint for Maryland funds that now have to be absorbed into the regular budget as well as that mental health coordinator so um, I, you know the, I just wanted to share that with you that that while that looks like four million fifty six thousand it, it's not it's um, minus these um, positions here and these additional yeah, costs that could be able to close the three quarters right there all of it yeah um, and then the second line uh, you know we put in at 1.5 we had originally put it in at three hundred and forty thousand um, dollars Friday we got word that the calculation for MOE was not accurate and then on Monday we got that in writing that they are now going back and recalculating that uh, there was two oh, 13 districts altogether that were negatively impacted two of those districts were very large districts um, one being Baltimore City who was going to lose over a hundred million dollars if that Senate bill went through and that calculation went through so we know that it's definitely going to change and we know that it's going to change for a positive we just don't know what that exactly is going to be at this very time so we're putting in the 1.5 because that was um, based off of prior year uh, so with that that's how this whole budget is built around that placeholder of 1.5 million and I know you and J and this towers have been very close with the the county staff of the county yes. and the commissioners to keep them updated on this because it's a, it's a it's a concern of theirs I know at 340, you know, I know they've been advised that this is an upward thing mm -hmm. when we're justifying our budget, but um, you know, it, it's a moving target. And it, we're it not going right to know probably to what April, maybe. Yeah, the session's over on April 11th, so I assume that we will. Has to be done by yeah, then, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So we hope, <laughs> maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not a, it's not an absolute. Along, um, along with the other things, and I keep entering this you know some of the capital things we've incorporated in this budget too that's exactly so, right you know just with the uh, books and painting is probably eight hundred thousand plus mm -hmm. so you know there's some it's all real money I mean I'm not right. saying that you know we're not you know but it's 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 you know it's not that we're trying to do something for nothing 
No, not at all. Um, and and as I said, so we had that placeholder in, and and honestly, we have looked at worst case scenario, and we have a plan B, and we know that if if we don't get this 1.5 and we get the original estimation, which was 340,000, we have a plan for that. If we're completely flat funded and we don't get any increase, we have a plan for that. Is it gonna impact staffing? Yes, it will. Um, but let's cross that bridge when we get there. Let's create this this you know placeholder right now and, and roll with this. And then if we need to do our modifications and um, amendments, then we will do that. But we're definitely keeping an eye on it and um, feel good about where we are right now. I mean, the one thing is we're gonna open up schools in September. We are definitely going to open up schools in September. How we open them up. Yeah. <laughs> and I think over the last couple of years, we have had a reduction in staff. I think one year we had, what, close to 20, Ms. Harper? Yes. And last year we had 10 or 12. Yes. So, um, you know, this has been an ongoing thing. And at some point you can move people around. And you know, so I'm hearing some of our teachers, you know, they're overwhelmed. But, you know, when they don't have an assistant in the room and stuff like right. this, it, it, it makes a difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it's it's... You know, interestingly enough, the budget process can be very complicating. And um, you know, while we're getting funding from some of these other sources that I just shared with you through ESSER three or through you know uh, Maryland Lead and things like that, so. It, it could put us in a position where we're cutting some of our, you know, positions that are in our operating budget, but yet we're adding positions over here. And how does that flow together? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the tricky part right now that we're going to be working through and figuring out um, once we get that final number for line two. Can you, um, remind, can you remind me? Is the equipment stuff in the capital fund? Depends on what the operating fund. It depends operating. what it is. It depends on what it is, but the capital is usually your building. So what did we do with like the purchase and the maintenance of the equipment? Computers. Uh, the computers would put that in S or three. Okay. Yeah. Right, Jane? Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Right. And that, but that will, that, that, that's the end of something at some point. That ends on 24. Yes. So then what, what's our plan? Well, um, it's, it'll be, per, it'll be outright purchase, so about four years. So we'll have to plan for it in four years and maybe go to the leasing option again. So 1.4 million will come out of ESSER 3 to support those Chromebooks for grades five and eight through eight. What about the high school? The high school, they have, they still, um, they, have. they still have one more year and it's in the operating. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's already sure? uh, in did our those three, did this three budget. years ago, right? The high school? I have a question. Uh, uh, to go back to these sheets, the mm -hmm. salary increase, FICA, retirement. Uh, I'm off from 77, 78, 79. It's not adding up to this 3.152. Am I missing something? Possibly the taxes. Okay, so we have the placeholder at. Two million seven hundred fifty thousand six hundred fifty-one. Right. You have the increase in the hourly rate for subs at a hundred thousand. Right. You have the national board certified teachers at two hundred and sixty. Right. We have the nurses increase at uh, forty-two thousand. There it is. I didn't see the nurse increase. Thank you. For oh, sure. Um, so the second section is uh, reduction. Can um, I ask a quick question? Oh, sure. I have two different ones. Are we using a different one? And this has got. Um, it's not the same. So are we going to be using another one when you go over the ESSER? But they're just, they're named the same. So when you look at this, if okay, you look at so the top left or top right hand corner, there's a date. Okay. So it had to be these. updated for a couple things. Okay. So why do I have two of them? We want to not use, the same. Make sure we're using the 371. Okay. So um, as I had said, the budget process was very lengthy and we took time to go through and sift through the budget to look at actuals and to look at, is there any opportunity for savings? And we asked the entire team to do that. So your, your principals at the building levels, we asked supervisors and such. And so you can see here, we have about $900,000 in savings overall through just the budget process that we went through. Um, and then if you turn over, you can see where it's basically a uh, cost of doing business. And these are um, a result. This is pretty lengthy this year, and it's because this is the first time that we went through this process. Next year, you won't, you won't see a lot of these 
very small items on here. This was trying to um, really get some actuals in place to plan ahead, be proactive. As I said, not wait till the end of the year to say, okay, we have end of year funds and, and now you can um, you know, do uh, printing and publishing for HR department type of thing. So um, yeah, they're on here quite a bit. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, these, I don't know if anybody has any questions, but these are things, as I said, that Amy really worked with her team, the executive team worked together, um, and just to see where is it that we can eliminate having to come to the uh, end of the year and, and do things that way. Um, and that takes us, as I said, to part two, which was additions, and we've already talked about that, and going through uh, all of those unfunded mandates. And then that brings us to the uh, request for additions, and I, I wanna make sure that everybody understands that, you know, line items 80 through through 89 are, are just, um, a very small fraction of what we had been requested. So um, we would be more than happy to provide you with an entire list of all of the requests that we had. Um, but the team kind of looked at something that was more reasonable in nature that we might, if we were to get a little bit of extra money above um, where we thought we were gonna be, you know, what would our priorities be? And so we kind of listed out those priorities, but we can certainly take that out um, for several more pages, but just didn't think that that was necessary um, at this time um, until we get a better eye on what exactly our funding source is gonna be. I think you're talking somewhere between 250 and 300,000 from mm -hmm. 83 to 89. Well, certainly having two new kindergarten teachers is key. I mean, we, uh, we all the studies say that, you know, that early learning is one of the most crucial. And that's correct. Yep. Well, and this in anticipation, I'm assuming of, of full-time so we have a three-year plan um, for uh, pre-K, the expansion of, of pre-K, and actually, I guess this is kindergarten, but also seeing some of um, some balloons there where uh, class sizes were getting a little larger and knowing that uh, they don't have instructional assistance in there, so trying to pull out and reduce class size at the kindergarten level. That's what these two are for. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also, as I said, using you know as many funds as we can at the pre-K level um, with expansion grants and... Um, the uh, oh help me out expansion and transitional blueprint. transitional yeah. um, money so we do have a, a bucket of money there to that it's addressing the pre-k so we're trying to put more energy into kindergarten to make sure class sizes are well so it, it's your recommendation to send over 5.5 in request additional request to the county to the county is one, that one, what 1.5 yeah 1.5 here at line two that would oh. be the MOE. Okay. Yeah. Boy, I was getting big. 1.5, 5.5. Now <laughs> sure. we, we can do that if that's sure. the, if that's what the board okay, wants I see to do. Your yeah. phone could be ringing shortly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. We are that placeholder that we would like to ask for right now is 1.5. Um, okay. And, and pending what we hear from you know uh, the final calculations of uh, the MOE from the state. Do you want to wait till after we get the calculations before we send this over? I don't know that we can necessarily wait. I, and I, I'll, I'll let Mrs. Towers go into her conversations as it relates to budget amendments and such because of where the state is right now. Right, so this, the state's recommendation is to do not let this hold up the budget process, almost like where we were last year, where uh, and you're shaking your so you remember yes. uh, that um, you approve, approve your budget and know your budget amendment process. So by the June 30th, you'll have the numbers, have your budget amendment, and be able to go in July. And I think we've been very open. I know Dr. Sellens has met with, and so is Ms. Towers, with the finance department and yes. the commissioners to keep them up to date on what we're facing, the numbers we're facing, and how this is going. Um, so you know, it, it, maintenance efforts, maintenance effort. We have a budget to provide our school system to operate efficiently. I think we owe to have a budget set and send it on. Will it get changed if some hard things have to be made probably if we don't get full funding? Yes, there will be, you know, and that's probably something we got to realize, which I think you mentioned earlier, um, you got plan A and B. Yes. You know? Um, and we've done that before. We're so. going to have to do that. I mean, it's, you know, it's just things with priorities and things, who knows what's going to happen over the next couple months. Um, but that's what we have to, I think, realize. But. Um, and you know, this, this is what it is. I'm, I, I, I like some of the things we do. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's certainly, it's certainly an open. This has been one of the easier 
budgets to, to look at and, and, and comprehend and some of the ones we've been through before. It's always more money than everybody, you know, wants to do, but uh, it is what it is. Well, there's always, it's always going to be an increase when you have the cost to join business saying you look at it. I mean, well, I mean, a lot yeah, of that I mean, is... I mean, we've committed, what, $5.4 million for personnel. With, with uh, a little bit, yeah, yep, 5.4 million. So, You're exactly I mean, right, 1.7 plus the 3.7. We can't, and, and we the, have to take it in yeah. the cost of doing business. Electricity is going to go up this year, gas yeah, is going to go yeah. up this year. It's not going to stand still. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean I overall, mean, for insurances, what, 85% of our supplies, yes. um, so your trash bags are going to cost more because of the oil prices. I mean, it's, it's a roll, you know, it's just a rolling down a hill, boulder going very fast. Anybody else? Helen, you got anything? Uh, no. I appreciate what you all have done. Ms. Towers, I appreciate what you've done. Dr. Sellins, I appreciate you know presenting this way. And I personally, I would like to see us, you know, approve it. And with understanding is there'll be some more changes followed by June the 30th. But our hands are tied right now because the state's not telling us. Um, it's a moving target, but we can't wait until May and then all of a sudden be running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Nope. So I entertain a motion. Not yet, sir. Action item first. Okay. <laughs> I'll be glad to give you one in a few minutes. That's fine. Okay. Any, any further discussion on the budget? Any questions for anybody? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to action items. Our first one on there will be our school calendar. Everybody had a chance to look at it last meeting. Um, Have we had any more comments? I got one email, and it was mainly a couple suggestions, but it was mainly not wanting to open up any earlier in August um, and everything. Um, I had two teachers stop me at the play Friday night to ask me, you know, what were the thoughts on A and B? And I was like, why don't you tell me yours? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and I think it was, what, 76% one a day? 71. 71. 71. 71 and 29, yes, sir. And, you know, and as we go through school, there's going to be a day somebody doesn't want to, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's a move. It's, we got to be there 180 days, oh, 189 for things. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. I know Helen's got a concern about snow days. Yeah, I would like to have seen us build in at least five because if we took our averages of the last three years, that was five. And it's it seems more challenging to come back and have the public see that, you know, they we set it and then they've changed their plans or we change it. So it seems easier if we would just build in five, um, which has been the average, and then at least we can not have to take more, you know, maybe change it on that side. We can just we can get out a day earlier or something right. if we don't use them all. But the we typically um, would tack those on to the end of the year anyway. If A is selected, then you have at least two options to kind of make them up during. But we wouldn't add, if we were to add two more days, we wouldn't add them within the year. They would automatically be tacked on to the mm -hmm. end anyway. So we certainly could modify option A by adding two additional days to the end for additional um, inclement weather days. I don't know what anyone else's thoughts are. It just seemed if it was more work and more challenging for people for us to change the calendar during the year, whereas if, and it seems as if we're always hitting three um, days. Uh, so to add to Helen's part of the conversation, you would take June 9th then and be a half day for students or June 12th would be actually. Oops, hold on, I gotta get to hey, hold on. If we were going we to add the extra two days on, so yes, right. so June 12th would be the half exactly. day. Exactly, mm -hmm. so June 12th would be the half day. That's exactly accurate. Or the board could choose to just add one and go in between the three and five and mm -hmm. do four yeah. and just add that Friday as an additional inclement weather day being a half day. Right. But, and, but the, I think the one thing you just mentioned, if we are gonna add days, first of all, in good faith, we wanna be in school safety-wise as much as we can. I like A because it gives a little flexibility on two holidays, which mm -hmm. we'd still celebrate in our schools. Absolutely. But, but um, we, we would do that. 
and you they're going to then we have a we've done good faith we go to the state mm -hmm. possibly if it's a hard winter to get a waiver um, and then um, if we have to then we add them on to the end at the end of the year is the only time they add them on if we're going to do it I like Helen's idea about adding one more extra day so the eighth the ninth would actually be a half day for the students and the twelfth would be a PD day for the teachers. And if we don't need them, then we don't need them. Right. And I, I didn't we have someone that said on, and if by chance then the MLK day became a, a weather day, weren't they saying they have a really big celebration that's actually on MLK? Didn't somebody? I did have two emails from community and I um, emailed them back. I think I copied the board mm -hmm. on that. No, Just, that I think um, that's why I'm, um, yeah. Basically, let's make it a day on in our schools and how can we partner together? Right. I mean, we do amazing with like Veterans Day. I mean, we, we do amazing things with in partnership with the community. Why wouldn't we take an opportunity <coughs> let us do what we do best, which is educate, right? And have um, a really awesome celebration. I think we would do great things. And so, I, you know, I would certainly make a huge commitment to if, if we have to use that as a snow makeup day that we make it quite a celebration and an educational experience for our students. That if we be. added another day in there, we wouldn't have to do that. That could be, we could take that off the table as a con weather contingency day. Is that right? If we so, in another so then you really want to select calendar B then? No, right. Right. And, well, I thought it said it was closed. I'm B starts earlier in the, in August. Yeah, a, calendar A gives provisions for both Martin Luther King and President's Day to be used if necessary as weather days, right, but right, calendar but B does not. All of the days are at the end. All the days are at the end anyway. Right, but it says all schools were closed for Martin Luther King's Day, so. Right. Right. If we, have, they, if we have snow prior to Martin Luther King Day. Right, which then, we rarely okay. do, but. Rarely. Yeah, we rarely do. We would have, we'd be off that day. Exactly. If we do have snow, we'd be on and we'd have things there. The next flag is, is President's, President's Day. day. Mm -hmm. Same we thing. If we, have, if, we, if we use that day, right. then right. They, they, we would be in school President's Day. And both those days. I mean, it get, I mean, it gives an opportunity for us to, I mean, we do it in school anyway. That's what we're there for, to teach right, exactly. history and stuff. So yeah. the me, having it in school is just, you and know, it shows that good faith effort anyway, you know, so. you know, as I said, it, it does show the effort on the front end of it, mm -hmm. so that if we do have four or five days, then we can ask for a waiver. Look, we already made up two days. We added one day to the end of our schedule. We're asking for a two-day waiver. So you can do that too. And, and we're kind of in that position right now. I mean, I'm waiting to make sure that season is over right yeah <laughs> um, but we, we still do have one day and so wasn't. we've made a good faith effort to make up days and I think we're in a good good place for a waiver I mean if we're denied it I mean Comar clearly says we have to make an effort and we've done that so and I think the schedule a gives is a great effort we're saying you know look we're ahead planning. of time we're these are two days we're planning, we're planning. If, if necessary mm -hmm. we'll do it but if it's not necessary we'll be out and that you know right. uh, and we can and as I said for um, we can certainly add an extra weather day at the end and make that Friday, you know, just bump that one if that's the purview of could, the could we do that? Couldn't we do that in the spring if we find out we're in trouble? Yes. Well, we would so have, to, have to regardless. Have to right. She's and just saying, do we plan ahead so people know it's better to right. back off than to add on, they're which all, is but, fine. We can, but then they're all going to be, not playing devil's gap, they're all going to be playing, well, do you have it or don't you have it? Yeah. You know, I mean, at some point, whenever we make the decision to add a day, we've been making the same decision to take it away because we didn't use it. That's this true. Is, well, this is the time of year that we would be adding it. Yeah. Right. Or taking it away. Or yeah. taking it away. Thank you. So that's where I, my personal opinion, I, he has a lot of merit. And so, do you want a motion? Open for anybody. Do you want a motion? Well, or any further panel? Any further discussion? No. I just like I said. I think we should just plan for the actual weather days that we have traditionally had. Well, and this, this, three has not been it. So. But this has five in it if you necessary. If we opt, well, if the option. Right, but right, then it's just going to come back to us and okay. put it back out there again to the. And anything else for? No, I'm, no, I'm fine with A. Amy. I make a motion to accept calendar option A for the 2022-2023 school year. Second. I have a motion, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Nay. Matter. I, no, it's I. It's just, yeah. Or abstain. No, I don't want to abstain. <laughs> okay. It motion carries 4-0. <laughs> we will be using option A. We get that out on the website as soon as possible. Okay. Next thing we've had discussion on our budget. 
everybody's had a chance to look at it. We've discussed it. We know where we are. Um, it would be the one we would adopt um, to both send to the commissioners, I'm assuming. Yes. And we'd, with the state budget, it, and of course it can be changed in the future, which we are being advised things can come up at any time. So I make a motion to uh, to approve or accept the superintendent's proposed budget for the 2023, 24, 2023? 2023. Right, school year. Yes. A motion, do I have a second? Second. A motion is second, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, ayes have it, thank you. Okay, now, we do have a work session next, the 16th. And our next board meeting will be, I'm gonna figure this out in a second, uh, April the 6th, is that correct? Yes. So our next work session will be the 16th, will be next Wednesday, correct. and April the 6th will be our next regular board meeting. And we are starting with a closed session, sir, at 4.30? That's what we had talked about. Yes. The agenda will be out by this Friday. Okay. So everybody have time to look at it? It's already out. Okay. Thank you so much, Carrie. Any other uh, thing for the calls? Do I have a motion? Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. A motion, second. Also, here say aye. 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 Nice have it. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you.